Okay, okay, so the next thing to do is to install RD Pilot Cloud. Now there are many options for setting up uh, so-called companion computer software on uh, Raspberry Pi, or Jetson Nano, or whatever as a companion computer to RD Pilot. I'm going to use RD Pilot Cloud because A, it's RD Pilot, and B, I kind of like it. Uh, there is a, others such as Arpanion and others that you may prefer, but I'm going to do Autopilot Cloud. And the reason I use I want to use Autopilot Cloud partly is because it's not only a connection between the local Raspberry Pi and the flight controller, but Autopilot Cloud has a built-in web client, which we'll have a look at in a minute, that once the flight controller is connected, will enable access from a website on the internet, cloud.artypilot.com, from, well, practically anywhere in the world. So let's do the install. Uh, the binaries come from uh, this GitHub repository, cloud.artypilot.org. There's a standard set of binaries available. What I'm going to do is install Although there are all of these different options available for downloading different binaries for Autopilot Cloud, what you actually need to do is go to the bottom and go here to Latest. Under Latest, I'm going to pick 64-bit because I'm running bookmark 64-bit on my Raspberry Pi 2.0. So what I need to do is I need to grab that file, but I don't want to copy it onto my Mac. I want to copy it onto the Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to go to my install directory where I've been copying everything down. And I'm going to put, grab that zip file, drone engage from the 7th of January, so it's very recent. And pull it down, there we go. Um, then I'm going to unzip it. And then I'm going to run install drone engage sh. Now notice it did a bunch of stuff, and at the end it says please rerun the script. So you actually run that again because it. First it needed to install all the dependencies and then it runs to actually do the work. I think it might even run again, but watch for that at the end because it's not done when it run, when it seems to be finished unless it says it's done. Okay, now, now it's actually done and what we want to do is notice it's asking me, do you want to edit your parameter values? In fact, you don't want to edit most of them, but there are a couple that you do. So the answer is to say yes. The communication module name, no need to change. Don't even understand what it means. The IP address 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 is correct, actually, because that's the local IP address of the local machine. And it's better to use 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 rather than the IP addresses of the machine because of things we've done, for example, with setting static IP addresses. So we'll go with that. Um, we go with the standard UDP port, no need to change that. We go with cloud.rdpilot.org because we are not running our own web client, we're using the rdpilot one. And the server port we don't change. But this is the one thing we need to change. This is so important. You to, to use RD Pilot Cloud, you actually need to configure your own account and or team. And so we're going to set the account username, which is the uh, email address that you would have used to set up your cloud.rdpilot.org configuration. My account password. Um, I'm going to gray this out for you. Okay, now the vehicle name, we're going to actually call this Cube Red. Just for the purposes of demonstration, because I 
haven't totally decided what vehicle it's going into. Well, I think I have, and stay tuned for a video about that. But for now, we're just going to say QBread is the vehicle name. All right, the vehicle description. We're just going to call it QBread. All right. Uh, so now it's created. Now that created, um, there's two components to Drone Engage. There's the configuration module and then there's the Mavlink module. The Mavlink module is what connects to the flight controller. Again, we want to edit parameters and again, we will not change most of them. Okay, FCB control. I don't know what changing that would do for me, so I never change it. The communication module IP. Don't change it. The UDP port. Don't change it. The UDP Mavlink module, UDP IP. Don't change it. The UDP port. Don't change it. And we're done. Well, it looks like I didn't change anything in DE Mavlink. So, so now it's created two services. Uh, it's created a communicator service, which is what communicates to the cloud, and it's created a Mavlink service, which is what communicates to the autopilot. This means that DE Mavlink actually installs with no parameters changed. It's out of the box, and it just works. And so here is what, here's the proof. I'll actually run the DE Mavlink pram command, and up it comes. So it's actually running, and let's go across to a, so a new browser window. We'll go to cloud, rdpilot.org, 8001, and I will log in. And when I log in, There we have a uh, a flight controller showing up. And we have a drone, a, a UAV showing up on, um, and here it is. It's Cube Red, and it's it's online. I could arm it potentially. Actually, it won't arm. But little things, if I actually turn the the flight controller, you can see here that it's actually live on this website at cloud.rdpilot.org. So we're, we're up and running, again, connected through the Ethernet adapter. Uh, I just love this. Um, Drone Engage has several different displays. I quite like this one on a larger screen. Um, and, oh, and this one also gives you some information. For example, you can see it's cube red with Mav ID 30. Currently has no GPS. Yes, I don't have a GPS installed. And again, if I roll the, the device around, you can see that the roll pitch and your options are, well, this is given this heading, are displayed. Okay, so Drone Engage is up and running. The service is running. It will come up automatically when the flight controller starts and when the Raspberry Pi starts. So that's done. So the last thing we need is Mavlink to rest. We want a rest interface to the flight controller. So Mavlink to rest is available on GitHub. And it's a tool that offers a RESTful API for the Mavlink protocol. So uh, all I need to do is go to releases, basically to latest, and I can pull down the ARM7 version of Mavlink to REST. So I'll do a wget, I'll grab it. Mavlink to rest, it gives us this crazy long name that I don't really want. So what I'm going to do 
So I'm going to move it. And I'm going to put it in user local sbin. And I'm going to call it now link to rest. So that's just a lot simpler. And I'm also going to have to make it executable. should be able to run now link to rest just make sure it runs there it is okay so what I have also if I go over to I have a, a start map link to rest script And all it does is runs Mavlink to rest, connects to that um, uh, connects to that Mav P2P instance at port one four five five two. So you remember I'm running Drone Engage or Audio Pilot Cloud off 14551, and I'm connecting Mavlink to rest at 14552. I just run this in a loop. Uh, in case something goes down, it just restarts automatically after waiting for a few seconds. So, and also I do need to put, create this log, under bar log. so I can access it and the service will run. So now in order for that to run, um, I can actually run it directly. Well, actually what I'll do is instead of running the script because then it'll put things in the log, I'll, um, I'll just run the command manually. So you can see that it's running. And let's go across to a browser window and we will hit QBread at, what's the port? 8088. And of course, you have to put in the HTTP when you're using funny port numbers. We go. We have have a link to rest coming up. It's connecting to the flight controller, and there we go. So we have vehicle ID 30, which is the cube red itself, and as you can see, it's streaming, and this is live updating. So we've got AHRS, we've got attitude, EKF status, global positioning, the IMU values, all of the basically the, the Mavlink messages that are coming out continuously from the flight controller being translated into REST. Um, we can have a look at, now there's some of these that won't be very interesting right now because they don't have anything connected. Let's see, we can see memory info. Click on the watcher from mem info there. And what we get is the live updates of free memory on the flight controller. So it's got 65K in one block and 300k in another block of available memory. We could look at attitude. Um, why not? I mean, if we look at attitude and I move the flight controller around, we should be able to see things move. 
Okay, so we've got pitch, we've got roll, we've got yaw, and if I move the flight controller around, you see those values change in real time. It's actually very cool. Um, so we've, we could we could see RC channels if I had a con uh, RC um, receiver plugged in, which I don't. We can have servo output, um, status text. There's probably not much happening on status text right now. Let's have a quick look though. Yeah, nothing. Oh, severity critical pre-arm waiting for RC. There you go, there is something happening. So it's not very happy that there's no RC. So the, basically the um, text messages that um, that go out into your messages are going to be displayed here when, they, when they're sent out, and that will be the most recent one. Okay, so what we need now is we need Mavlink to REST to be running as a service. So what I have done already is created a service definition and it's uh, Mavlink to REST service and it will run user local SBIN start Mavlink to REST which is basically what we did. So all I need to do Start that Mavlink to REST service. And let's check that it's running. There it is, it's running. We flip back to our browser. We should just be able to refresh and see that, yes, it is. There it is, it's running. So we're good. and we need to enable it so that it will restart again at next boot. So there we go. So now we have permanently started our Mavlink to REST service. And we'll just do status again just to check if it's still running. There we go. So we have Mavlink to rest. And um, I'll just show you So I actually created several services to make everything work. I have a definition for a PPP service and I don't need that for this definition but I'll be talking about that in another video. Mavlink to REST, the one we just did, Mavlink, and Media MX. We also have the services created by um, the Drone Engage um, installer as well. And uh, that is that is everything. So oh, Media MTX is the service for running the Media MTX server for getting the, uh, the camera running. The setup for streaming video is actually pretty straightforward. I had tried VLC, um, which has a command line option, but um, it didn't work as reliably as the services I wanted. And I found uh, this thing called Media MTX, and currently that's what I'm using. I think there's some options uh, for using it with uh, FFmpeg that I could probably use to get better performance over low latency, I uh, haven't done that yet. So uh, basically Media MTX um, installs into a directory which by default installs under your home directory and it's called Media MTX and there's a, there's a YAML file that is used to configure it, media called Media MediaMTX.yaml. So, And I didn't change anything in here except one thing, which is I configured a new path to define the output for a, a source called A8 Mini. And mostly because it just sort of bothers me that the A8 Mini defines its source as main.264, which is kind of silly. 
uh, but also you just need to define an input and an output. So what I've done is here is set the input to 144.255 at port 8554 and main.264. And that's what the A8 mini camera requires uh, out of the box. Potentially you can change it, but I found it easier just to set that. So when the A8 mini comes up, it will broadcast RTSP on that address. And by defining this A8 mini and this as an output, I pretty much all I needed to do to basically forward the RTSP through the Pi to over, well, either um, direct IP if I happen to be have a local IP address or um, more usefully uh, over the tail scale VPN, which is where it would probably be nice if I could downscale the resolution of the video a little bit because it's quite laggy over the VPN. But uh, on the other hand, it does work and that scaling stuff is something that can be added later. So this is basic functionality, happy path, get it to work the simplest way possible. And that is as simple as this. So all that needs to happen for this to work is to run MIDI MTX is pretty straightforward. Just run the program, it reads the YAML file and tries to find the input data source and then output the data if it receives an input. Right now, there's nothing there. Now what will happen if I go over here and just simply plug in the A8 Mini to power. As you can see, it came up. What's happening here is it's trying to find a path to forward that A8 Mini output. Well, it's not, there's nothing there listening right now. But what we can do is we can come over to another computer and I'm running this on my Zenbook, which is Windows. And I just connected to, uh, to the data stream and you saw that the connection came up. And now we're looking at the video over here and there it is. You can see the A8 Mini is streaming over the tail scale VPN and coming through on my uh, Zenbook, which should and actually does work because I have done this from out of the field. If I have a, a LTE data stick connected to the Raspberry Pi, it's connected to the internet, then I can actually watch that video remotely or on another computer and it more or less works. And like I said, it's a little laggy. Now, technically this A8 Mini also has an SD card. What I've also done is created a, the same thing as I've done with the others, I've created a, um, a little script to run MIDI MTX and all it does is change to the Pi home directory and then runs and then it exits and if it needs to start again then the service will take care of starting it. So what I have is I have created a service called MIDI MTX and as you can see that service is here And that's a fairly simple service definition because all it really does is run that start MTX program as the user Pi. And all I need to do, and we can see that happen um, now if I start this, and I have that service set to auto start. So if I start the service, again, I can open the network stream. And there it is, number two. Okay, that's the second uh, inst uh, instance of that running. So on the Raspberry Pi, which is just here, as you can see, this is the Raspberry Pi. This Ethernet cable is actually connected around the back to the back of the A8 Mini and uh, via the, the switch block switch and we've got all the connectivity we need to video and record. So 
that's three for three, right? We've got the Raspberry Pi, we've got the Cube Red connected to the Raspberry Pi, we've got the Raspberry Pi connected to the internet, we've got the A8 Mini connected to the Raspberry Pi as well, and it can all get connected well. It has to be a reasonably sized, reasonable sized vehicle, but it's all doable.